this is it, Apple's newest and cheapest laptop, the MacBook Air equipped with Apple's M1 chip. I'm sure you've all seen the reviews on it already and so have I, but the reason why this video is so late is because I just bought this thing a few months ago, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is pretty much maxed out in terms of performance. This MacBook Pro is equipped with an eight core i9 processor, 64 gigs of RAM, and the AMD 5600M with eight gigs of HBM2 memory. This thing is an absolute monster and it's what I use to edit all my videos and create motion graphics work or VFX work on After Effects. Now, if you guys haven't seen my 16 inch MacBook Pro setup, check out the video, which I'll link down below. All right, so the 13 inch MacBook Air with M1 is just incredible. I've only used this for the past week and I'll just say this now, battery life on this laptop is unlike any other laptop that I've used and I've used quite a bit. From Windows PC laptops to other MacBooks over the years, this is by far the best laptop with the best battery life. I can easily get over eight hours of battery life on a single charge and maybe even push it to 10 if I'm being conservative. But the standby time is also really good on this laptop if you don't use your laptop every day. Now, if you're looking for a more in-depth review of the MacBook Air, I'll leave a couple of my favorite reviews down below, but the main reason I wanted to check out this MacBook Air is for its performance. I've seen the videos, I've seen the benchmark numbers, and I just had to check it out for myself and figure out whether I made a mistake by buying a $4,000 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, as a professional video creator, I need something powerful that can handle 4K 10-bit H.265 footage from my X-T4. I know that whenever I import these clips to my 16-inch MacBook Pro, I would need to create proxies inside Final Cut in order for me to have a seamless editing experience. Now, if I don't do that, I can't scrub through my timeline as fast as I'd like, and whenever I play back the video inside Final Cut, it'll drop frames from time to time, which, to be honest, shouldn't even be happening on a $4,000 machine, but on this MacBook Air, it just cuts through it like butter. I don't need to make proxies, I don't need to switch it to performance mode or anything like that. It just works. Export times are just as quick as my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is insane. And this is a MacBook Air, which has no fans to cool the system down. I really don't know how Apple managed to pack in so much power into this chip, but I'm really impressed how they're able to pull this off, especially at this price point. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that if you're a Final Cut Pro user like I am and you rely heavily on plugins, make sure to check whether those plugins are M1 compatible. Some of the plugins that I use for motion VFX are not compatible just yet, so it'll be a bit difficult switching to an all M1 setup right now. Second thing to note is that this model that I'm reviewing only has 8 gigs of RAM, and so far I haven't really ran into any issues with the apps crashing or apps stalling. Everything just works really well. Now, if you have an extra $200 to spend, I would highly suggest upgrading the RAM to 16 gigabytes to give you more headroom so you can run more apps at once without sacrificing performance. But to be quite honest with you guys, even if you don't have the extra cash, the 8 gigs of RAM is fine for everyday computing. The fact that I can edit 4K 10-bit H.265 videos in Final Cut without even plugging power into the MacBook Air, I can browse on Twitter using Safari and check my notes on Notion without getting the beach ball animation is something I can't even do on this 13-inch MacBook Pro running an i5 quad-core processor with 8 gigs of RAM. I'm just really blown away with how optimized the Apple M1 is. Like, a computer like this shouldn't even exist at this price point, but somehow Apple did it. Now, I've only really tested first-party Apple apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, which are obviously super optimized running on Apple M1, but I also tested Photoshop Beta, which was developed and optimized for Apple M1. And that app ran like a champ. No lags, no crashes. It can handle really big files, even with just eight gigs of RAM. Of course, there's gonna be more pro apps that'll eventually be optimized for Apple Silicon chip, but we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for those to be optimized. So do I recommend Apple's M1 Max? Absolutely. For the price that you're paying, this is gonna be faster than most PCs and even some Intel-based Macs. With a Mac Mini, you can get an intro to Apple's M1 chip for just $699, and that'll actually run smoother and offer more ports than this Air, which starts at $999, because the Mac Mini has a fan that can cool the system down and also offer additional USB-A ports for your accessories. So if you've been holding off a bit and you want something a little bit more powerful that won't break the bank, pick up these new M1 Macs. You won't be disappointed. For me specifically, I think I'll send this MacBook Air back to Apple and pick up a beefed up Mac Mini instead with 16 gigs of RAM to replace my 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I'll probably wait a few more months till more apps and plugins are optimized for M1 before I make that jump over. Anyways, let me know what you think about the Apple M1 chip on these new Macs. If you enjoyed this quick little video, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.